Today we're going to talk about how to work with EEPROM. It's a rewritable memory that exists on your board to store settings. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about how it operates, but I will explain how we're going to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hook up a stepper for the TMC2209 with sensorless homing to show you how you can work with it and other things that you can use. Now keep in mind that if you haven't seen my previous tutorial on a how to set this up, I'll leave a link in the description in the upper right hand corner for you to see how to do that. So Moving on from that, what we're going to have to do right now is we're going to pop out the drive, which is the SD card right here, and we're going to place it inside of our card reader and place it in the computer. So you may hear a beep. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over to the desktop so I can show you what's going on on the computer. So over here we have the Marlin firmware. And inside the Marlin firmware, there's several tools that you can work with. For instance, we have the G codes, and this is gonna be very important. So I'm gonna open this up for a second. And I'm gonna show you way down here that we have G codes that work with the EEPROM to show us what is on it. So reporting settings is probably gonna be a very big one, but there's more at the bottom for TMC steppers. So I wanted to show you some of the functionality on how to tune your steppers. So we're gonna go through these and actually work with it. But first we have to set up the firmware. So I'm gonna go over to VS Code and I'm going to click on the Explorer, then Open Folder. Then inside here I'm gonna to go to my Downloads folder, my first Marlin folder, my second Marlin folder, then Select folder. Now this version is 2.0.9.3, so the most current. So as you can see, the default environment is currently set for a Mega 2560, so we're going to have to update that in a moment. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. And we're going to search on Octopus and the current board that I'm working with is the Octopus Pro. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna note this right over here. And what this is, is the actual chipset or MCU that we're working with. So I'll show you this real quick so you know what I'm talking about. So over on the actual board, what you can see here is the MCU. If we were to zoom in on it, you'd see STM32F and it then would say 446. On other boards, it may say 429. So I'll take us back over here so you can see what I'm talking about. This is what's actually going to be on this particular chipset. So we know which one we're working with. So let's minimize this and source. Go to configuration.h. Then we're going to scroll down and we're going to change our motherboard by pasting over it what we just copied. Next, I'm going to change the serial port to negative one. And for those that don't know, you can also use negative one from here and then use this for your display on this particular configuration. On other boards, it will have to be reversed like the MKS type boards. So. Now that we've got that set, we need to set our stepper up. So I'm going to search on A4988, and I'm going to pick the TMC2209 right here, paste it for our X stepper. Now I'm not going to make any changes down here for our steppers and anything else. I'm going to leave this all default for now, and you'll see why in a second. Then I'll go to Advanced, and I'll search on 800 to get me in the neighborhood of where I need to be. So this will bring us to our current stepper. Obviously, there's a calculation that you can perform in here for root mean square if you so choose, but we're going to stick with the defaults for the moment for all of these. 
Then we're going to search on TMC debug so we can check up the debug state. So TMC underscore debug. And we're going to enable monitor driver status. This will enable us to use G codes up here so that we can work with it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the second one, which is down here. And we're going to enable this as well. Then I'm going to go back up and I'm going to search on sensorless and see if I can find sensorless homing. So it's right down here. So you can see it over in here. We're going to have to enable this by hitting the control and then the forward slash that's underneath the question mark on your keyboard. That will enable that setting. And then down here, I'm going to set this wrong from the way that I've done it in the past. So I'm going to set it to 170. And that's going to enable us to actually um, have an issue. Hopefully, maybe we should do 200 for sensitivity. And that is for the TMC type stepper. So it goes from 0 to 255. And the reason I'm showing you this is so that I can make a mistake on purpose. So now that we have that set, we do have to go back to configuration.h and search on EEPROM. And we need to enable it, which is right here. So we're gonna do the control forward slash again, so that it's enabled. Now there's other functionality that I'm not enabling. I'm gonna let you play with that on your own time. But I just wanted to let you know that there's other functionality in here that I'm not talking about. So. Now that we've got that set, we now have the ability to actually read from this and use it. And the reason that I show you this in later tutorials is so that you can learn how things are set up first and then adjust them yourself on the fly. So now that we have that set, we have to go over to platformio.ini and inside of here, what we need to do is set our default environment. So this is what I was talking about with the INI. We're going to find the file that our chipset is located with, which is STM32F. So that's the family of processors. And we're going to search on Octopus again. And as you can see, there's several here. So the one that we're going to pick is obviously this one, because this is good for the pro on this particular chipset. Now, if you had the other chipset, you would use the one down here, but try and avoid the USB one. Work with this one up here. This should be more stable. So now that we have that set, we're going to go back over to platformio.ini. We're going to paste it over the default chipset. Then we're going to click the garbage can over here to clean the previous build that's in the .pio folder. And then we're going to build it by clicking the checkbox. Now this may fail on the first time that you click the build button. If it does, go back and press the build button again. And if it doesn't show an error or does show an error, what you'll do is you'll click on the error and correct that. The very first error. The ones after that are usually a cascade of errors. So this looks like it's building pretty well at the moment. So hopefully it won't break. So once this completes, we'll go over to the .pio folder inside the build folder for the Octopus version one. And we should see the firmware.bin appear in a moment. You'll probably see the ELF first or e yeah, ELF, pardon me. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on this, then we'll right click and we'll go to Reveal in File Explorer. This will bring up the actual file for us. So we're gonna place it on our thumb drive and so I'm gonna go back over here, right click, and I'm gonna send it to the USB drive. So now you can see that it's there. This is the previous one that loaded yesterday. And as you can see, it's in all capital letters, which means that it was a successful load. If you do want to reload it on other systems that have the exact same setup, you'd rename it to firmware.bin. So now that that's set, we're going to go back over to the workbench for a second. I'm going to pop out the drive. 
I'm going to then place it inside of here and I'm going to power the board and it's on USB power at the moment with the jumper right here. So it should load. So we'll hear a beep when it's successful. So I'm going to power that up. And as you can see, it's flashing a little bit and we heard the beep. So now I'm going to disconnect this for a moment. There's no power going into the system right now because it is unplugged which I'll show you right now. So we're gonna remove this jumper over here and place it here because it sometimes interferes with the functionality of the TMC 2209. So I'm gonna plug this in after I plug in this right here so it can power the board. Now it's energized. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna go over to Pronterface. So when I bring up Pronterface, what you'll be able to see is the actual configuration. So let me bring this up for you now. So inside of Pronterface, as you can see, it's set to COM port one. So that's a problem at the moment. And so what we're gonna to have to do is actually find our COM port now I seem to have an issue with this, so I'm gonna minimize this for a second and bring it back up here. So give me a second to close this. And what we're actually gonna do in a second is we're gonna actually bring it back up here. So apparently there was some kind of issue with my connectivity. So here we go. So as you can see, it says COM port 15 now that I actually reopened it, which means that this is probably the COM port, but you can always check in Device Manager by powering it on and off and looking at your USB COM ports or your ports. So let me show you that real quick here. So if you go over to Device Manager, Let me bring this up so you can see it. We have the COM ports right here. One is the default for your computer and the other one says STM Microelectronics Virtual COM port and it's on COM port 15. So we know that that is the COM port that we're working with. So we're going to go back and connect to this. So I'm gonna connect and it says the printer is now online. So to check the actual settings that we had before, we're actually going to go over to the desktop for a second to check these. So as you'll be able to see in a second, we're gonna look for the M503 command. This says report settings. So we can just type in M503. So we'll go back over to Pronterface and inside of Pronterface, I'm gonna paste it down here. So as you can see, there is the M503. So I'm gonna press enter. And that shows us all the settings that we currently have. Now, if we wanna see the settings for the steppers, we can do M122 and press enter. And so now that we have that set, we can see what the actual set for the RMS current and set current set for. So you see the 800. Then down here, we have sensitivity for stall guard of 200. So if we go to home this, this is gonna make a lot of noise. So be prepared for that. So I'm gonna click on the home button. And apparently it doesn't want a home. That's awesome. So let's move forward. So I think I know what the issue is. So I'm gonna power down this board for a second. I'm gonna let it discharge, and then I'm gonna make sure this is actually connected. Okay, now I'm gonna power this back up, and we're gonna to have to... So I'm gonna disconnect, reconnect, then I'm gonna try homing again. So it doesn't wanna home at all. So what is the issue? So one of the ways that we can find this is we can use the command to see what our settings are of M1, or excuse me, M914, and this will show us the bump sensitivity. 
So it's set to 200. Now if we go back over to the actual desktop for a second and take a look around here, we can go in here and we can check on the sensitivity. So the sensitivity of 200, and it says highest sensitivity is 255, lowest is zero. So we're getting too sensitive here. So we're gonna have to change that. So we're gonna go back over to here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it by saying that we're doing the X stepper and we're gonna change the sensitivity to one, two, five and press enter. Now we can check this by going back and doing the M914 and see what it is. Now to save it, obviously there's a step to do that and it's a M500 I believe, which is save settings to EEPROM. So if we reboot currently in the state we're in, we'll see this again for the sensitivity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna avoid that and we're just gonna save it. So to save it, you're gonna type M500 and press enter. Now when you actually power cycle it, it will be there. That is what it's gonna be used for, but let's test it real quick to make sure it works. So you can see that it works smoothly. So if we were to go in the other direction of zero, this would make a lot of noise like a wood chipper. So now that we've got that set, I'm gonna show you some other quick things in here that you may use in your configuration. So if we go over to here and we do M503 to display all the settings, you can see that there's other settings up here for the M92 command. So if we type M92 and press enter, this will show us our X configuration, our Y configuration, our Z configuration, and our extruder configuration. So that is actually located over here, and I'll show you this real quick. So inside of VS Code with Marlin firmware, if we go to configuration.h and we search on A4988, this will bring us to the steppers, but if we scroll back down here, here's where these numbers come from. So this you can adjust doing the calibration algorithm to what your current settings are. So if we're over here again, what we can do is we can change the setting for instance right here we'll copy this command for a second and i'll paste it right here or i'll try and paste it right there let me try that again and we want to change this we'll say to 81. so now if we press enter and then we do m 92 again we have the value now changed to 81 for x stepper so that's how you can change steps without modifying the program i prefer doing it in the marlin firmware and the reason is this so i can track the changes so normally what i would do is this so let me go over and show you so inside of vs code I would change this normally to 81, but we're doing that in the actual EE prom right now, but we haven't saved it with an M500. So there's lots of G codes that you can work with that'll actually help you configure your printer. I usually hold off on showing you these only because I want you to understand how to configure things. So at this moment, I wanna thank my patrons and people on PayPal for their encouragement. And I will place at the end of this video a thank you note to all of you and everyone else. Please like and subscribe and take care and be safe.